Okay, so we all know that a Souls-like is a game that's kind of like Dark Souls, but I'm not sure if it's possible for someone to give a definition of what a Souls-like actually is. Um, actually, I feel like this is pretty easy to answer. A Souls-like game is just any game that has a distinct roll mechanic. If you can roll in the game, then it's a soul- Like I said, it's basically impossible, so instead, let's look at games that I think are Souls-like that you probably missed. If that sounds interesting, this is episode 9 of Steam Dumpster Diving. Alright, but first, check this out. Boom. 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 So yeah, I've once again been sponsored by and have partnered with Displate to create a poster inspired by one of my favorite games of all time, Bloodborne. The idea was to reimagine the game coming out during the N64 era or some sort of tactile toy set. And this was so much fun to do, Kevin's computer did an amazing job. I'll talk about it more at the end of the video, but if you're interested in this poster or the two other ones I've made in the same style, click on the link in the description and uh, check it out. But yeah, let's play some games. Alright, up first we got Metamorphos. This is a free game, and it's actually a student project from the DigiPen Institute of Technology, which is a university from Washington. When it comes to the games I play in these videos, I think there's something like particularly inspiring about student projects, and they're really fun to look at, so I'm excited to check this one out. Let's do it. I'm a little guy with glowing eyes. I'm getting like Egypt vibes. That's actually cool as hell. I like that dodge. So we got light attack and heavy attack. Oh, Russ, got a bonfire. Oasis found. Okay. You know, we're in Egypt. We got an oasis. Makes sense. <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm burning, apparently. Okay, all right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Heal. All right, I guess I just kind of like sniffed my hand to heal. That's good. You know, this doesn't look bad. This actually looks like pretty good. I wish I had some sort of like block or parry. I don't think I do. Bonk. One thing that this game really captured, you know, about the, the whole Souls experience is just having a lot of pots and barrels to break. Because um, at the end of the day, I think that's what Dark Souls is like really about. This feels like a mini boss. Or a boss, okay. Ow, ow, ow. Ooh. There we go. I'm gonna guess this hurts me, but let's find out. Well, I'm really surprised this is not hurting me. Like, this screams poison water or something bad. Oh, here we go. I like this guy already. He actually has like a surprising amount of moves, like, you know? Oh, I'm, I'm gonna fucking burn to death. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, all right. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Ow. Oh wait, I turn to glass when I die. <laughs> His belly button is just a flamethrower. Yes. All right, I did it. Man, for a student project, that was actually like really well done, I think. Especially the bosses and just like the enemy moveset designs. Visually, pretty, pretty good. Overall, just like an extremely solid project. Really cool. I think everyone that worked on this should be really proud. Making games is hard. Even something as like short and simple as this, like making video games is really, really hard. It takes a lot of time. But anyway, good job, guys. Death's Door. So I'm actually recording this the morning this game came out, and this is actually so new that there's no reviews yet for it. Uh, I imagine it's going to change pretty quickly though, because this was featured at the E3 conference for Devolver Digital. So this isn't quite as deep of a cut as most of the games I feature, but I still wanted to cover it. This is made by the people who made Titan Souls, and I kept seeing people say this is like Bird Souls mixed with Zelda, and that combined with like the isometric view and like the art style. I was instantly sold. Playing it now. Let's do it. I'm just a little guy. This feels good already. Like, I haven't even done anything, but this feels good. Okay, wait, this is cool. So, like, it's like a Grim Reaper agency. Oh, so much color now. Hey, can you guys... Can you guys stop following me? Oh, fuck. Wait, this is cool! Oh, this game looks so good. Would you like to increase your combat abilities? Yes! Oh, there is leveling! Okay. This game is a fucking souls, like... Am I killing you? Hmm. Unfortunately, I'm still alive. <laughs> That's a mood. <laughs> God, this game's fun. 
Is that a boss? Is this a walking guardian of the door? Wait. <laughs> Wait. This is awesome. He's we can fly. This, oh my god. What the fuck is happening? No, 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 no. Yo. Pothead. <laughs> he has soup in his head. Yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna beat this game. All right, I'm back. It's been about seven hours, just beat the game, and uh, I liked it. If you're a Zelda fan and the look of this game appeals to you, I think you'll like it too. Don't expect too much soulsiness though. Like, you do have iframe dodge rolls that you use to kill guys who drop souls that you use to level up, but that's mostly where the similarities end. Also, I really can't stress enough how much I like the look of this game combined with the polish and care that went to all these designs. Like a frog king that uses a pogo stick that breaks the floor of the boss arena as he jumps around. There's some real quality stuff here. However, I gotta say, I walked away from this game feeling kind of disappointed. The combat is a little too simplistic for its own good, and bigger than that, the level and puzzle design left a lot to be desired. Big sections of this game are dedicated to Zelda-esque dungeons, but the puzzles here never evolved beyond really, really basic stuff. In short, while the game looks phenomenal and has amazing designs, the gameplay itself felt surprisingly bland at times. This game is like eating a really good piece of bread, and the whole time you're thinking, damn, this is great, but I really wish this was toasted or had some butter on it. I think this is a solid game that's elevated to a very good game by its presentation, but I think it could have been elevated to a fantastic game if it just had a little more meat on its bones. I'm still definitely recommending this game, just go in with the proper expectations in mind. Alright, next up we got The Wind Road. This is another Chinese game, and at a glance, graphically, it looks really great actually. Uh, it does have over 5,000 reviews, but only 80 of those are in English, so I'm gonna guess that almost no one's heard of this game. Let's check it out. Whoa. Bro, I... <laughs> what the fuck? This is so much! Dude, even if this was in English, this would be overwhelming. I've been playing for 30 seconds. I've been playing for 30 seconds. Uh, okay. Dodge. We have... Okay. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Dude, this tutorial is like the equivalent of like some guy just like shouting in your ear and like constantly be like, no, we're wrong. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yep. One, two, three. Switch dance. One. Okay, there we go. Thank God. Sure. I think I just drank poison. I have an internal injury now. I need to go check that fatty. And jump on the cow. Oh, you can jump on the cow? Okay. Why does the child have a larger head than like the adult right next to him? Whoa, shit! Here, try to, try to hit me. Try to hit me. Yeah. Try again. Try to hit me. Nope. Yep. This is really weird so far. At least I can jump on stuff. Any game that lets me jump on stuff, I like, I like a lot more. What is happening? Whoa! Whoa! Okay. You wanna- Okay, 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 alright. Whoa, my god! Am I dead? I think I can just meditate. Whoa! I meditated wrong. <laughs> Full recovery. The bleeding has stopped. Ow. Ow. Is he- Is he gonna stop? Is he gonna stop? She, bro! Stop doing the move! Stop! Oh my god! How do I stop him? I, uh, I don't know what's happening. 
I really don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm doing good though. Alright, I got him with the, the fighting game combo. Who? Whoa, my god, this guy's big. Can I can I jump on you? Oh! I did it! Yes! Wait, can I meditate? Yes! You know what? I feel like this might be a good place to stop, actually. I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna get better than this. I feel like I kind of get what this game's going for, and I've seen enough. I'm not gonna have more fun than I'm having in this very moment. All right, I want to do these two games together because they're kind of similar. They're both very good Souls-like Metroidvanias, and they're both games that get a recommend from me. Let's start with Ender Lilies. If there's one game you've already heard of before watching this video, it's probably this one. I've seen it get some coverage from other people, and it's very deserved. I love the art style. I think it's really beautiful, and the game itself is dripping with atmosphere. It also has a remarkably similar setting to Dark Souls, with it taking place in a fallen kingdom with loads of undead people and former knights. There is a story, but most of it is told through bits of lore and notes you'll find scattered around, which again, makes it feel Soulsy. He plays a little girl named Lily, but naturally, she's not a fighter, and that's where this game transforms into the JoJo Stand game, because instead of attacking anything directly, you summon the spirits of other humans and monsters to attack for you. This is easily the best part of the game because you're constantly expanding your collection of attacks, and you can mix and match them in interesting ways to create cool combos. You use a sword, summon a whirlwind, and launch a dragon all at the same time. This leads to some fun creativity when deciding what skills you want to level up and prioritize. Enemies can feel a little spongy at times, but for the most part, I had a lot of fun with the combat. Now the game never gets bad by any means, but there is a feeling of inconsistency across the experience, whereas the deeper you get into the game, areas feel like they got less care and attention visually and in terms of level design. This also unfortunately extends to boss fights at times, with some of them being really good and some of them being kinda eh. Again, not bad, but not nearly as consistently great as something like Hollow Knight might be. Also, the platforming in this game rarely does anything particularly interesting. Once again, it's not bad, but when you compare it to other Metroidvanias, it's sort of middling. Either way, I enjoyed this game a lot, got the true ending, and it's a pretty solid recommend for me. Next, let's talk about Vigil the Longest Night, another Souls-like Metroidvania that hasn't received near the level of attention of Ender Lilies, which is surprising because I think I actually like this game more. If you've played Salt and Sanctuary, you'll feel right at home here, and that's no surprise given that the devs listed it specifically as a source of inspiration. This is a very Bloodborne-esque game with lots of Lovecraftian elements to the story, world, and boss designs. They nail the look of this game, and the story goes in some pretty wild directions. Combat feels great, there are four different weapon types, each with their own skill trees, and they all feel fun and distinct. The level of variety here is seriously impressive. There is so much unique gear in the form of armor and weapons, and each piece is modeled individually on your character, which these sorts of games don't always do. There are also so, so many different magic spells to find. However, I do have to note that the balancing this game is a bit of a mess given how easy you can cheese most enemies and bosses with certain spells. For example, there's this one spell where you summon magic birds, and the way in which you can just spam this spell trivializes pretty much every boss in the game. For that reason, this game can be a little too easy if you take advantage of all the tools it gives you. The real draw for me personally, and why this game clicked with me so much, is that the exploration is fantastic. Once the second act starts, the game really opens up, and you have so many different places you can explore. And within each of these places, there are so many secrets to find. So many unique pieces of armor, weapons, rings, spells, items, etc. Overall, I highly recommend this game, and I seriously don't understand why more people haven't talked about it. Alright, up next we got Two Months. The developer of this game says, Two Months is a Souls-like action RPG adaptation of one man's struggle to develop the ultimate handheld computing device. Definitely a weird premise for a game, but uh, let's check it out. Alright, here we go. In the age of smartphones. The world was flooded with uniform devices. The furtive Sebastian so easily forgotten. Okay. <laughs> We're a gamer guy, I guess. We do be playing. Band Slammer. Ooh. Bro! Bro, he attacks too fast. Go, 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 go. Oh, okay. Pyra LCD. So I think the plot of this game is I'm collecting the parts of a smartphone. Is this the Crestfallen Knight? Hey, you know how that I know this guy's a Dark Souls 2 fan? Bearer, seek, seek, lust. Very interesting. So the way you level up in this game is you have to fit different Tetris pieces onto the board. Huh, that's, that's unique. Dude, 2B has nothing on this. What the fucking hell? Bro! 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Bro. What the? I can sense your envy. You want abs like mine, right? Yeah, I do. Come on! <laughs> Oh my... No, 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 no. Alright. Alright. Alright, I think I'm... I think I'm done. Alright, so... It's actually been a couple months since I played this game, but... I just wanted to come back and give this game another shot. I feel like I quit too early, you know? I wanna try again with this game. See, this is how you know this person is a real FromSoft fan because they even bothered to include the whole section where you have to fall down extremely carefully or else you just fall to your death. <laughs> this is... You ever play a game where it feels like the person who made it just hates you? Just hates you for playing their game and like wants you to know that? I'm fucking done with this game, holy shit. Okay, I really did try with this game, even to the point where I came back a couple months later to play it again, which is something I don't do. So I don't really know why I did it in this case, but I did. So here's the thing, I can tell that whoever made this is a fan of the Soul series, and a lot of that is very apparent. However, this game has some of the most irritating boss and level design I've ever seen. I think some people in their head consider the Soul series to have like trial and error gameplay, and it really doesn't, and that's part of what makes it so fun, is that like you are actually always in control, and there aren't really quote-unquote cheap deaths. This game has so many of those to the point where like, I, I just feel like it was wasting my time. And you know, so I'm curious if this person actually does consider the Soul series to have that kind of gameplay. I do want to end on a positive note though, I do think that the upgrade mechanic in this game with like the Tetris pieces and how you have to like rearrange them and like decide what you want, I think there's like a really interesting nugget of an idea there, and if that was like expanded upon in a different game, you could have a really interesting leveling system. So, cool idea there, but definitely a pass for me on this game. Up next we got Sigwin Baldo. This is another student project, but this time it's from Japan, from the Vantan Game Academy Tokyo. And what caught my eye about this game was the first review I saw on it that said, Really happy that Demon Souls has finally come to PC slash Steam. So is this really Demon Souls on PC? Is this good enough for those of us that don't have a PS5? Let's check it out. Let's go Baldo. Got it, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, I got it, I'm absorbing all of this. Even if I could read this, this is a lot to dump on a, like, a player. <laughs> Just paragraph after paragraph of exposition. I don't know. Oh, here we go. We're in the game. Okay. I think he only has one arm. All right. We are fighting Berserk. Right, let's try the punch. Whoa. Killed by the demon. Okay, the biggest thing I'm noticing here is they made the main character way too fast, both like in terms of matching it to the animation and just like game balance itself. Like look how fast I can just walk around. I don't even need to dodge. I can just like, I can just walk around him so fast. All right. Yep. Vanquish the demon. That's why they said it's like Demon Souls. <laughs> I think the main character's name is... I think the main character's name is Baldo, but he has so much hair. Nice. Oh, it homes in, okay. What else you got? Ooh, ow. Ooh, ow. Ooh, stun locked. <laughs> I think I was actually stun locked there. Wow, he's just BMing me now. What is that? What, what is that? What is that? That was nothing. Oh, wait! 
There we go. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Okay. Yeah, I don't know about this one. He's just kind of... He's kind of just let me hit him. Alright. I did it. Okay, so the game didn't end, but I don't have any more levels to pick from. So I think that's just the end. Wait a second, why does he have two hands on the main menu? He should be missing that. Unfortunately, no, this is not Demon Souls on PC. Uh, it's actually really rough, <laughs> to be totally honest. However, as always, I think student projects especially um, are really interesting to look at just to kind of like see the weird design choices they make and the ways in which they miss the mark are interesting. So I hope the students stick with it. All right, we got Eastern Exorcist. This is a Chinese game from developer Wildfire Game, and right away, looks absolutely beautiful. On the page itself, it says it's going for a hand-drawn Chinese ink painting style, and that's a great idea. I think it looks awesome. Had a couple people recommend this to me, saying it might be a good fit for this series, so uh, yeah, let's check it out. You know, I love it when games let me jump, but I love it even more when they let you double jump. Mm. Bro. This game looks good. Stamina? Oh, there, we have stamina. Oh, if you don't dispel monsters, they come back significantly stronger. Oh, bonfire lit. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, monkey boss. Man, I'm having fun with this game. Use pair to reflect projectiles. Oh, oh, interesting. That's so that's a 3D object, clearly. That's really cool how they mix the two. Were they doing that before and I just didn't notice? All right, first, let's get a couple things straight about what this game actually is. I have a feeling a lot of you are looking at this and thinking, wow, another one of those 2D Metroidvanias, but that would be incorrect. This game is almost entirely linear and the combat is the whole game. There's essentially no platforming or exploring to do outside of the combat encounters. And I think that's fine. Not every game needs those things, but understand what you're getting into if you're interested in this game. Now I beat the game and it was surprisingly short with me clocking in around three hours. And at the time, that was my biggest complaint. However, at the time I recorded this, it was actually still in early access and since then it's been fully released and part of that was releasing a second character to play as. When I saw this in the menu, I assumed it was something simple like a new skin, but no. This is an entirely separate campaign with its own unique characters, areas, enemies, and bosses. Also the character you play as has her own unique moveset and skill tree. I haven't beaten the game with her yet, so I can't vouch for the length, but I'm assuming it's the same as the other campaign. And with that, the game has basically doubled in length and content. So yeah, the hand-drawn Chinese ink painting style that this game is going for is gorgeous, the combat is flashy, there's a decent amount of content now, and it's just fun to be a Chinese witcher. If this looks interesting at all to you, I highly recommend at least checking out the free demo. This game is getting slept on pretty hard, with only 150 of the 5,000 reviews being in English. Alright, next up we got Spell Beats. So at a glance, this game does look a little sketchy, but I thought the idea of it was really interesting. Basically, it looks like it's trying to do a like Dark Souls boss type game with like dodges and stuff, but a rhythm game on top of that. And I'm not really sure how you can combine those two, but it sounds really interesting. So let's check it out. I, I don't know what any... I'm just seeing these randomly. All right, so my strategy is I just wait for like my stamina at the bottom to fill up. And then once it fills up, I just go in and I just punch. All right. Each spell has an input timing, which increases its power in the spell multiplier. The spell multiplier increases quicker when you cast different spells. Okay, wait, now I can see the timing. I couldn't see the timing before. Okay, um, am I playing this game right? Am I doing it? Okay, so the more, the better I time this, like my multiplier gets higher and higher. I'm trying to pick the right element as well to counter whatever like element he currently is. All right, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to get it. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. All right. Yeah, I, uh, I feel like I've seen enough. 
Uh, obviously this game is pretty rough, but the idea of it is interesting. I think the idea of like a rhythm based third person action Soulsy game kind of with like a dodge mechanic is interesting. You know, like I think like combining Crypt of the Necro Dancer vaguely with something like this is interesting. I don't really think this game at all really gets the potential for that idea, but like I'm happy the idea is out there now and I, I'm curious to see like maybe someone else play with this a bit, like rhythm based Dark Souls. There's something there. It's not this, but there's something there. Alright, a lot of people seem to like it last time when I talked about the Dark Souls one, so the rest of the video is just going to be me talking about the new Bloodborne poster and some of the references we put in it. And even if you have zero interest in actually getting this for yourself, I still think this will be like an interesting thing for you to look at. So first let's start with what's probably my favorite. Uh, I lean the crow feeding some crows like some bread. And I just think this is like such a cute and fun idea. I had to like google it after I came up with it because I was like, has anyone done this before? Has anyone done I lean the crow feeding crows? And I don't think they have unless I just missed it because it seems like such an obvious idea to me. But maybe it's not, maybe it's just obvious in my head, but I like this a lot. Next above her, we have Bloodborne Cart. This is a really fun one because Bloodborne Cart is such a huge meme in the community, and we wanted it to make sense, so we picked Alfred because Alfred's the character with the big wheel weapon, so we gave him a cart with a big back wheel. And we also gave him a Molotov cocktail with eyes on it, you know, kind of like a Mario Kart power-up bomb. Uh, yeah, really fun one, I think. Then we have the Celestial Emissary and a UFO abducting the hunter because everyone always says these guys look like aliens, so I thought, you know, why not just put them in a UFO. And they also have a snatcher right next to him being like, hmm, interesting. I'll I'll remember this. So these guys right here are supposed to be the fishmen from the fishing hamlet in the DLC. But I thought it'd be fun to have them like literally be like fishmen, you know, with like fish heads. And what would be funnier than a fishman fishing another fishman with a fishing rod. I hope that's funny to other people. I think this is really funny, but maybe it's just me. Okay, next is one I, I hoped people would get on their own, but I'm gonna explain it anyway in case people don't get it. Uh, the Gascoigne boss fight, you know, you have the music box and playing it will make him transform early because there's like, you know, there's a story there. But we thought, why not have the music box hooked up to speakers and just have the hunter be blasting it and have Gascoigne be saying they're like, oh, this, this is so loud, it hurts my ears, like, rah, you know, like, I don't know, it's just a really fun visual, I think. So there is more to talk about with this poster, but I'm gonna cut myself off here so I don't talk for too long. I think this poster is amazing. It might be my favorite of all three that Kevin has made. He did an amazing job. Please do check him out. He's in the description. Also, if you are still interested in getting this for yourself, there is a link in the description for that as well. And yeah, keep sending me game recommendations, keep sending me feedback. Uh, I do actually look at them, but I think that'll do it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.